Hello everyone, this is Flatline, and today I'm going to be doing my second Hot Seat episode, and it's going to actually be State and his PVT. Recently he did post up an article on GameFront.com. I will post the link in the description so you can read it, where he kind of goes over it through his mindset, but I also wanted to go over it as well since State is definitely one of my favorite Protoss players from NA for sure. And we're going to be going over his three games against Drunken Boy. I believe he loses one game. I'm not particularly sure. And then we'll go over some of the games that he won on ladder. Now I could use the other ones that he did in Shoutcraft against QXC and Xenocider. But they used... Uh, the game heart, which is kind of buggy for me, so I decided to just find some replays on the ladder from uh, that featured him, and we'll go over them. So his PVT is a little bit different from mine. If you watched my stream, I always nine scout against Terran because I want to get inside his base. I want to see if he's getting. Uh, like proxy racks, is it gas first? Is he getting gas? Is he going command center first? Etc. Etc. State, on the other hand, does not actually scout. His scouting will be his hallucination. And what he does is he actually just has enough units to defend everything. Like any kind of like shenanigans that the Terran can pull. Which is like really really good in a sense. But if they're going command center first, the Terrans will have a slight advantage. You know, because they have an the economic advantage and you weren't really uh, taking that opportunity to play a little bit more greedy. As much as the Terran player was, so that is the downside to not scouting. Is if they're playing super greedy, you cannot respond to their greediness until you scout it, of course. Ooh, that. All right, so see, so you can see he goes Zealot, Stalker, Sentry. You actually want to. And he goes with the three gate robo now. Like I said, this is just being super safe against everything. Because if you look at his screen on the mini map, he actually does not know anything. He doesn't know. I mean, he knows where his opponent spawn, but that's his. That's about it. But what's really cool about this is his timings. Okay, so around this time is when the widow mine can actually start to drop. Look at this, Observer finishing up at 7.30, which is a pretty good benchmark to have. Now if they're going gas first, the Observer will be slightly late. And all you have to do is just pull back. You can use Hallucination to kind of like bite off the Widow Mine to detonate it. If you don't have uh, detection, then you can go back to money, or you can sacrifice a probe. I have weak sinuses guys by the way so you can hear me sniffing every now and then I'm sorry about that and he goes for very fast blink now why is that because his opponent the drunken boy went for very fast tech he went for a very fast starport for metavex and when you're dealing with metavex whoa there we go when you're dealing with medevacs, you need to be a little bit more mobile than having the Colossus style. Now, you can still pull out the Colossus style, of course, but an easier way of dealing with this is to actually have mobility. And Stalkers are a great unit to have when it comes to dealing with drops. And when you have Blink, it's really, really difficult for the Terran players to kind of commit their units. It's a dropping because if they drop, 
9 out of 10 times they're not going to be able to pick up a leaf if you're facing blink stalkers. So that's why he goes for blink stalkers. He's also getting his uh, forges and this is the downside to this build is the forges are quite light. You can see at, I mean they're going to finish around 1030. And if you look back over here at Terran's base, oh my gosh, he actually does not start it. So he's going a little bit delayed on his upgrades. Hopefully we'll find someone that, uh... There's a game against the Muslim I want to show you. That kind of pinpoints the weakness to this build, because I do think it's wise to kind of go over the weakness of a build. Alright, so he's doing some Hellbad drops as well. Now, when you're dealing with Hellbad drops, this is what you have to do. You actually have to spread out your units. If you're all clumped up with your sentries and zealots in one spot and Terran sees it, Terran will just drop their Hellbads on top of your units. You lose all your sentries, and that's 300 gas right there. You don't want that really to happen at all. So nice force field preventing them to actually get any closer to the probes. There's those blink stalkers actually doing some work there. Oh. Me starting up plus one plus one. These extra gates. Now he wants to expand pretty soon here. This widow mine actually shot them off. Once he kills off this widow mine, he's probably gonna expand. If you're wondering what's a good time to expand, right when your first Colossus comes out with this style, you have Blink Stalker, you have a, you have a Colossus out, you generally should be okay, should be fine. And he sees another Widow Mine. Back at Drunken Boy, he's pretty much playing the somewhat standard, he has a lot of Hellbats with his bio. He's going into double starport. He doesn't really need to make any more hellbats, it seems, because he has, what's this, eight? Right now, he needs to get a lot of Vikings. And about the time he gets about eight Vikings is about the time he will probably push against State. And after you get your third, it seems State does get his Templar Archives. He's starting up 2 2. You do want to prioritize Chrono Boosting your upgrades, because remember. He got this finished at 10.30, which is pretty late. It's not too late, but it's definitely a little bit later than a standard uh, double forge style. So to catch up in time, you want to just make sure you constantly chrono boost these out. Constant, constant. And something I want to really pinpoint on state, let's look at his vision. Boom. Look at all these green dots on the minimap. He sees pretty much everything and he should not get surprised whatsoever he right, sees the two drops look at this perfect reaction right here drop has been denied you see the units coming over here to the third denied just absolute amazing uh, vision from him and he also sees the factory floating now when you see a factory floating in PVT a very safe assumption is that they're no longer going to be making Hellbats. And they still might, if they were making Hellbats in the beginning, they still probably have Hellbats. And you can see them right here. But in the early game, if you see them lift off their factory and just use it for scouting, 99% they are not going to be using Hellbats with their composition. Unless they bring it back to their base and land it. Because you don't. Terrans usually don't want to make another factory just so they have a factory back at their base to make Hellbats. And 2 2 finishes right before this one. Now, the timings of Drunken Boys' upgrades are actually really, really late. But, uh, nevertheless, well, it doesn't matter. Look at this. He's trying to use this ledge as towards his advantage. This, a lot of you will not have a problem with this map because it's been taken out in the map pool on the ladder but just giving you a general thing it's kind of like how you want to position your units on any kind of map you want to make sure your stalkers are in position he sees the huge drop coming into his main 
There's warps and some more stalkers. You want to target fire and be medevacs. And the reason why is because, or as much as you can, it's because then he cannot drop anymore. Or he can't pick up and leave. And that's the scary thing about drops is when they can just drop it and then pick up and leave. And this bike is going to be able to snipe off a Colossus. That's a nice little pick off. So that was a little nice win uh, I th for Drunker Boy in my opinion because he lost all of his stalkers. Now Stay has to remake all those stalkers. He's also getting 3-3. He's getting a Warp Prism. The Warp Prism is a nice addition that he does quite a bit in uh, PVT. He usually gets it right when 3-3 starts. And what this does is pretty much put Terran on the back foot. Generally, Protoss should have the map control once they have 2-2, two -two, generally. But if Terran are playing super, super aggressive, it's really risky to try to claim map dominance for Protoss. And this is the cool thing, once you get the War Prism, you can get your fourth up as well. But here comes a nice little timing from Drunken Boy. He's 2-2 finished. 3-3 is not going to be close to finishing up for State. Snipes off the Observer. And look at the position by State. It's really hard for these Vikings to get a position to actually deal the damage and focus fire at the Colossus. The Colossus is all the way behind the uh, Nexus here. Nice Storm being planted down. There's no EMPs on those. Look at this. And now he loses all of his Colossus, unfortunately. And this is looking pretty grim, right? He's not looking the best thing. Because he lost all of his Colossus. No! He lost all of his Ghosts. He lost most of his Vikings. DT over here at the third, denying uh, some mining. He has another War Prism out on the map. He's going to Dune Drop inside the main. It's a smart idea from Drunken Boy. He knows that there's not that many units coming out from state, and state probably worked in a lot of units to put this army. That's just a general thing that Protoss do. And he cleans it up. Now, this is actually really good for state because. Boom! He has his fourth. His fourth is untouched. His third is still alive. Took some damage, but still alive. So yes, he did lose all of his Colossus. He also lost most of his High Templars, but he didn't have that many. With the same retrospect, his 3-3 is finishing up. He has a faster 4th. He traded all those Ghosts and Vikings. So now it comes down to who can reinforce the quickest. And generally, it's going to be Protoss. So that kind of gives you a safe leeway to make these Colossus back into your composition. I do really wish that he has a second Robotics now. So it's a little bit quicker and a little bit easier for him to rebuild up his Colossus count. And he's still doing damage here. Now if you're Terran and you're watching this and you're wondering what the heck do I do against this? SimCity with a bunker and you could put like a marine or two marines in there with a, with a turret and you should be fine. Just a bio in there and you should be fine. So he snipes off the fourth but look at the cost. I mean he's losing quite a bit of units here. Most of those medevacs are in red but... Nice job by uh, Drunken Boy. He actually was able to get out of it, uh, to get out of it, pretty safely. But he did lose a lot of units in that trade for the Nexus. So if I was State, I would actually double expand at this point. He knows that this Terran is gonna have to play on the back foot. He's not gonna be playing any time aggressive, time soon. Now he's spreading his units here. Might be going for the uh, planetary. Nope. Just gonna bypass it. Trying to snipe out the Vikings. He knows he doesn't have any height up. He does have high Templars. 
You kill out the Vikings, the Colossus will reign supreme, and even two Colossus is quite a bit of units. Nice War Prism, this is that, is that second War Prism he remade. Uh, it's gonna help him reinforce his units. You don't have to wait for it, you don't have to bring a, a probe to build a pylon, which is one thing I like about War Prisms. But here comes the engagement, units are all spread out on this map, so it's a little bit... Uh, it's a bit clustered right now on the uh, managing the army right now, but State is definitely having the huge lead here. He denies a base. His base is being is finished rebuilding, and he's pushing on to the pressure here. And the economy of Terrence is actually not the best. He doesn't have that many minerals. He lost the base. He's only on pretty much one mining base. This natural is almost pretty much taken out. But he does have a planetary here, so he's going to be able to survive quite a bit. It's going to take a, a while for State to actually have enough units to actually out DPS at the planetary and take on the army of Drunken Boy. Looks like he is going to opt to harass over here. Now this is to kind of bring Drunken Boy out of position to kind of leave the planetary alone. In that case, then he's going to be able to kill it off. But looks like Drunken Boy is doing quite fine. Retaking that expansion, her state rebuilding that as well. And that's one thing I like about state style of PVT is he's aggressively expanding. Once 2-2 two -two hits for state, you can just see it boom, he's just doing everything. He's got the war prison, he's getting 3-3, three -three. he's expanding a fourth. We got Storm, he has Charge, everything is lining up really nicely for State. It's actually allowing him, he's allowing these DT Harass to actually do quite a bit of, of work here. It kind of keeps Terran on the back, look at this, he's chasing after one High Templar. Just one High Templar is, is pushing the entire army of Drunken Boy back over here. Now yes, this means he could push his units a little bit further. The front mark, maybe kill off the rocks and whatnot. But at the same time, you can think of, hey, you know what? His units are all over here. That means I don't have to worry about them whatsoever. I'm back at home. Now, this is abusing the map. But at the same time, most of these maps will be kind of like this, where the fourth base and the main are pretty far apart. And this DT and Zealot will probably do quite a bit of work. Now, this is so cool by state. Why is he targeting down the supplies? Because Terrans will be supply blocked and it'll be a little bit harder for them to actually resupply their units. Even though they'll lose quite a bit of units here. Uh, if you kill off like 8 supply depots, that's definitely something you don't want to happen. And he finally finishes that, that, that up. But you can look at this, he's supply blocked. He is supply blocked, he cannot make any units right now. Yes, he can call down some, some uh, supply here. But his economy is in bad shape. Do you really want to call in supply when you would much rather prefer uh, mules at this point? I mean, he is drying out of mineral, uh, minerals right now and doesn't really want to you know, use supply drops at this point. He does kill off these observers and that's quite annoying. But this is looking, it's getting worse and worse for Drunken Boy, I mean, State's nearly maxed out. And a little bit more for Drunken Boy as well, just, I mean, a little bit less of Drunken Boy. It's almost maxed out though. But he's going to be able to bank up compared to Drunken Boy. Drunken Boy still hasn't got his 5th. The 5th has been way established for State for quite a while. Nice EMPs right here. And oh my gosh, they're on move command. Colossus instantly die. I mean... Yeah, this is this is totally bad for State. And this is one of those moments that happens quite a bit in PvT for you where this happens. You know, you accidentally move commander units, you actually, And that was the problem. He went down this ramp, move commander, took all the MPs, all the shots, all the Viking shots. Until he got in a straight line, which took about ten seconds. And you know, you cannot take that many shots. As much as the lead as you have, and now the Terrans can be pressing forward. He knows he has a supply, the army advantage right now. 
There's really nothing Stay can do. He's trying to remake these two Colossus right now. But there's too many Vikings out on the map. I would prefer him to actually just stick to Immortals because they're just going to get one-shotted. At this point, you want to actually just prioritize a lot of ground units. Now, he does kill off all these Vik uh, all the uh, Ghosts here. So, he could transition into High Templars with this. But I do not like the idea of going into Colossus at this point. There's just too many Vikings. Too many Vikings for you to actually compete against. Now him landing this is actually a good thing for uh, Stay here. Because once he gets these uh, Colossus out. He should be fine. But he doesn't have anything reinforcing these uh, these Colossus. And so it's just going to be quick work. And this should be GG. Wow. State played absolutely amazing in this game. But it looks like he loses. All because of that Mook Man. It kind of shows you, you know. Even when you have a lead, do not get too comfortable with it. Because then this could happen. You know, you might make a mistake and then you end up losing. It costs you, pretty much costs you the game here. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he lost. I would be damn surprised if he actually comes back from this. He loses his fifth. That's not the biggest thing. Uh, the good thing is there's not that many Vikings, so a Colossus switch would be nice. There's this Colossus. Uh, but look at his money. He does not have that much money whatsoever. I'm pretty sure if you look if you look at the units a loss resources wise, stays definitely behind. Uh, barely um, about a 1k. But the thing about uh, Terran is that they thrive on unit efficiency, whereas State kind of just thrives on AOE splash as their efficient units. But uh, Terrans usually have all efficiency in all their units, so the cheap Marines are highly efficient. You can easily replenish them, whereas the Zealots are not that efficient. Those are pretty much your go-to units to kind of like replenish your army with. Now he's going to try to focus fire the Vikings, but look at this. Once again, too many Vikings on the map. And he's dancing his units here. He kind of knows it's pretty much game 79 to 135. And we should be seeing GG now. So throughout that game, he actually played very, very well. Um, he just didn't... That move command pretty much cost him the game. Just make sure you're on top of your units. That's all you have to do, pretty much. Make sure that doesn't happen to you. Alright, so the next map is Aklon Waste. And this map is a... Uh, I would say probably the favorite map for all the races in general. It seems to be pretty balanced in all the matchups. Of course, PVZ will be kind of like, whoa, pros can get a fast third. But uh, other than that, I mean, that means if you see a faster, you get a fast forward. That's Zerg. Ling Hydra to me is, is pretty good against fast expansions. Alright, once again, he's doing the same build. He's not scouting whatsoever. Now, if you're wondering what happens if he proxy gates or proxy factories, like he goes gas first into proxy factory. In fact, he's actually getting a very quick widow mine. And this is definitely gas first that uh, State did. I mean, Drunken Boy did. And this is the moment, uh, or this is one of the things I don't really like is that you don't have any scouting info. So you don't know exactly if you're facing gas first or not. Now it's a little bit easier if it's a proxy factory because then you have your units right here at the natural. You can kind of like force the widow mines to burrow away from your main. When you're out in this frontal position, it's really hard for their widow mines to get all the way into their main and disrupt the uh, minerals over here. That's pretty much how you deal with a proxy factory. You just want to make sure they're not able to get up here. 
You just want to buy enough time for your observer to get out at that point. So what does he do? What does he do? What would State do? He does not know exactly what's going on. I mean this... I'm pretty sure there's a medevac out on the map. Yeah, there's a medevac already. Six minutes. Medevac comes out when it's uh, gas first. And if you look at it, his robotics is pretty late. I mean, it's going to take another additional minute for his observer to finally be out. And remember I said 7.30 is a good timing. It's a good timing against, you know, racks then gas. Not a good timing against this. Oh. Clutch. That right there is... Wow. Very well done. Drunk Boy actually messed that up. You actually... I guess that means you should not drop it in the mineral lines, but maybe behind the mineral lines. So that way they can't surround it that quickly. That was really, really scary. I hate doing that because every time I try to do that, I end up... It'll have like 5 HP left and then get that one shot off and you're like, oh, well, GG. He's trying to focus fire it. Nope. Mm, too much. Now he does hurt. That's pretty cool. Let's see the... The upside to Widow Mines, I guess you could say, is that you can kind of use it to do its friendly splash. Loses both of its entries, but look at this. The damage from Drunken Boy is non-existent. Look at the supply, 55 to 46 in favor of uh, Stay Here. He does see the expansion. How does Drunken Boy follow up? He's getting a Raven with this army. And this could be... Whoops. A, uh, a counter to what State does. State prioritizes a lot of blink stalkers early in the game to kind of deal with this kind of harass from Terran. Banshee barely staying alive. You see that very quick Twilight Council from him. Oh, Hellions over here. Force field's his main. Want to make sure they can't drive all the way up there. And that puts on overcharge to save him. Gosh, that unit is so good. I love the militia core. So yeah, so he's could be in a response to, hey, you know what? You like to go for a lot of blink stalkers early in the game. Let me hit a timing with stim marines, you know, MMM. But I also have an additional raven. And it looks like he's actually getting a second raven. And I could put down these PDDs. And at that point, he can't really deal with my army. Those stalkers become non-existent at that point. And we'll see if he actually does that. We'll see if he actually does that. One one starting up. He's also getting blink. Pretty standard from him. Now he does see uh, the uh, raven here, but it looks like the raven is going to shoo off this uh, observer. <laughs> Use the hunter seeker missile for it. Nothing too exciting happening at this point. Does put these two cannons in response to that raven just floating over there randomly. Banshee's over here as well. Does he have a supply request? He does not have one. He is getting a third. And that first Colossus is about to come out. Now he's getting a quicker third. Now you're wondering why did he not do that in the first game? Well because this was a gas first build and it did absolutely no damage. This map also allows you to go for a very quick third because of this. Kind of kill off the rocks and buy you a lot of time. So his third finishes. And look at this. He still has his Colossus that needed to be alive. Run, pro! So he does kill the Raven with the uh, two Photon Cannons here. And he loses only two probes. 
So a pretty good trade for state. Two on the way. Drunker boy getting his two two as well, adding on extra barracks. Like I said, once, well, he's a little bit more aggressive than I would uh, like. But I mean, this all comes down to the opening of Drunken Boy. His damage did nothing. I mean, <laughs> wow, I can't even talk. His damage in the beginning did absolutely nothing. There's the PDD. The, the stalkers are pretty much useless at this point. It doesn't have that much energy left. You can see this battle is not going too well for him. And that's because of that PDD. You know, imagine all your stalkers shooting, but they're actually not shooting anything. That's not good, especially the style that State goes for. So that's the other downside to this style of uh, Blink Stalker heavy compositions is they go for the Raven build and they actually hit you with the Ravens, like two Ravens and they hit you with MMM. All those Stalkers become obsolete. And you know, you cannot have, how much, and this is from now, but like he had way more Stalkers. He has 10 Stalkers, that's 20 supply that's pretty much obsolete. They're not really doing anything but shooting against energy. You're wondering what should you do? You can, uh, you just, in my opinion, you should just go for High Templars and, uh, just feedback. You need to kind of feedback those PDDs. Feedback the Ravens before they get the PDDs, that's even better, but if you can't, then feedback the PDDs because you need those 20 supply to actually do something and just make them into Archons, uh, at that point. Oh, he's gonna get some free medevacs here. Can he get one more? Nope, he does not opt to try to take that. He's getting Storm 3 3 on the way. Should be getting a War Prism after this third Colossus. Does he have charge? He does have charge as well. Pressing forward with his Blink Stalker is going to be able to pick off some of these uh, medevacs here. And units. That's the cool thing with getting super early Blink. Is that if you deny that first pressure and they're retreating, you could just Blink on top of them and just, you know. Either force them to engage or let them lose all those units. So that's the upside to this as well. And now at this point, Terran is uh, not in the best shape. You see that War Prism in effect now? I was talking about after the third Colossus here. Has Storm finished up? 3-3 three, three is about to finish up. I think he's not going to engage until 3-3 three, three finishes. That gives him a huge... He has pretty much two minutes in game time of a timing push that he get hit against Terran before they get 3-3. Three, three. About two minutes. And we'll see if he takes it. I mean, he's nearly maxed. Terran is maxed. He just has to make sure he doesn't do the same mistake as move commanding his units here. War Prism joining up with this so he can reinforce. He's not using it to harass. He's using it to pretty much reinforce. He's going to snipe off that War Prism. That's a nice thing. But look at this. Now he leaves his army way too open. Oh, that was a bluff, uh, blunder. I mean, a whiff. Nice thorns being cast beyond that first one, and that should be game. You can see the supply just dramatically go in favor of stake here, dominating this game in convincing fashion. Just defending, defending, defending. And this is pretty much the go-to style of Protoss. A lot of people don't like that, and a lot of people don't mind that. It is Protoss is the race to just play passive, just play defensive, 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 defensive. Oh, 3-3. Three, three. Okay, let's go ahead and attack. It's pretty much how they play. Uh, it's just the most reliable style, if you're wondering, in the PvT matchup. There are other uh, ways of playing PvT, but like I said, this is the most reliable way of playing PvT. IMO. So now we're going to be going on to Belshire in this series. And after this, I do want to show one more replay of the Muslim 
a good state because so far Drunken Boy's been throwing some some weird builds at state. It's not really the standard. But I'm pretty sure against the Muslim, the Muslim will just play straight up uh, against state. I just want to show you so you can kind of see the downside to the build in full flesh and the upside or the general things of what would usually happen. Also, if you do want the replays of him in the Shopcraft and WCS uh, participation, I will leave the link to uh, the Gamefront website where you can go ahead and download it directly. And definitely give him a shout out. You could uh, follow him on Twitter at se uh, at state se2. You do have Twitter. You know, give him some thanks. Be like, you know what? You just helped my PVT. If you did, well, just be happy that he actually give this content out because it's not that many pros that do that. Oh, it does not kill that widow mine. That sucks. So he's doing some widow mine aggression. Remember. 7.30 is a pretty good time. Let's look at this. He has his units here. Where is his medevac? So he's skipping the medevacs and prefers to get double or the star point with the reactor on it. And does scout the uh, hellbats coming over here. So how does he deal with hellbats? Lots of stalkers. Lots of stalkers. Now this is a little bit vulnerable to hellbat drops. You can see he's spreading out his units. Anytime you see those hellbats, uh, you do want to spread out your sentries. You do not want them clumped up, because then they'll just die. All of them die to uh, the hellbats. Here comes those hellbat drops. He kills off one of those sentries, but all these stalkers are going to be able to shoot this off. Oh, ah, oh, it doesn't kill out on time. Oh, those observers, you gotta be very careful. Alright, but beyond that, he didn't lose any pros. So that's the biggest thing. You want to make sure you don't lose any of those pros. Of course, if you lose three centuries, that's just as bad as losing like ten pros. But he only lost one century in that, and, and a zealot. So he is fine. Now he's not actually opting to go for blink in this. Oh, there it is. Never mind. I was about to say. This doesn't look right. He's adding on a lot of gateways. He doesn't have a forge up. I'm actually curious why he added these four gateways. I would assume he would add two gateways, then the forges. Why? 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 It looked like he wants to prioritize a lot of units. Does he see the double evos? He doesn't. Hmm. And we'll see how he holds it. It's pretty much even supply right now. There's a double forge at 10.30. Remember back in game 1? 10.30 was when they finished. 10.30 is when they started to finish. Or started. Hellbat drops on top of these sentries. You can see how they pretty much decimate those sentries pretty rapidly. And now you don't have enough energy for uh, for force fields, for guardian shields. You kind of push up on this. He needs this Colossus to come out right now. You can see the supply not in favor of him whatsoever. He does have stim. He is target firing the Colossus here. He needs to micro this a little bit. And barely survives. Barely, barely, barely survives. He loses more. Of course. That's a downside. He doesn't have blink as well. And that was the other downside. He's, he wasn't able to blink micro his stalkers. To kind of, you know, preserve them as much as possible against that. But it was like a semi-even trade. You can see the third going down for Dragon Boy. A third should be going down for State. Remember that one Colossus. Okay, time to expand. He hasn't started his plus one plus one yet though.
Why is that? His gas is really, really low. He had to remake his sentries, and see, that's why. And I was curious, why does it? What, what's happening to his gas? Boom, three hundred gas. He had to throw down for those three sentries. You do not want that to happen to you, as a Protoss player. Gas is very, very important. It's more important for you than Terran. You know, Terran doesn't really need all those gas. In fact, generally, whenever you watch them, they'll be more. They'll have like a thousand gas banked up because their units don't demand that much gas compared to Protoss. So he does have blink, so he's going to be playing a little bit more aggressive with these stalkers. And that's the cool thing with this: play a little bit more aggressive with the stalkers out on the map. You know, poke, kill off a unit, blink away. You can't really stem and chase those stalkers. Look at this. Kills off that, kills off that, blinks away. Nothing Drucker Boy could do. And if he stems and tries to and he bites the bait, he's using up all of his energy on these medevacs then. <laughs> Once again, a nice vision of the observers. Knows there's a drop on the way. Has the stalkers in position. You don't really want to show your stalkers, but definitely when you have blink, until these are within sight. And like that, yeah. Like, you don't want them hanging on this ledge because then the Metavex would just shoo away. Put them a little bit farther away, and then you can just blink right there. And once the Metavex are in position where they can't retreat, and then you can take them out. Huge win for him. Third finished up way before Dragon Boy has his third, so that's his advantage right now. He's gonna have an economic advantage. His 1-1 one -one is finishing up, but look at this upgrade. The upgrade advantage is going towards Dragon Boy at this point. Because he wasn't able to start his 1-1 one -one at the time that State wanted to. But he had to commit his gas to those sentries and whatnot. Ooh, don't blink forward. Yeah, you don't want to blink forward when you're poking wood stalkers. You want to just blink away. You just want to move forward. So you can have that uh, blink to be able to move back. Alright, time for him to put on some harassment. He's getting the pylon right here. He's going to be able to use these four zealots. He's got his warp prism on the way. Generally, the warp prism comes after the uh, third classes. I guess it's after the second one. It looks like he's opted to go for more pressure base than usual. And one of the reasons why you want to, you can just fit this warp prism in is because this is about the time when you're investing all your gas into upgrade. You know the the uh, the plus your your ground attack and ground armor. Then you also need to get charged, and that's the time you want to get Templar archives. That is a lot of gas that you're you know requesting. So instead of making another Colossus, you can use that 200 gas to make a Templar archives, and then just use the minerals to make uh, a War Prism. War Prism gives you uh, a slight map control. Depending on the Terran on how they defend it. And if they have vision of it. <laughs> He's getting his fourth right now. And Tutu's about to finish up. So, uh, Draco Boy does have a timing where his 3 3 should finish up before states. But it's not going to be that big of a timing because of Chrono Boost. <sighs> Comes that warp in. Very, very annoying. And this is the, one of the reasons why you can't rally your units with your army as Terran. You kind of have to have the rally back at your main. Or your natural, I guess. Because any drops that happen, then you can just grab those units that you, uh, that you were rallying with over there. And now he's being picked apart. Look at this, it's buying him a lot of map control. It's forcing him to go back to his base. And if he doesn't want to go back to his base, he's losing economy. So that's when you're like, okay, I just had to defend this. And then I pretty much will win. State's definitely in a very comfortable lead. This Besides the point of him being behind an upgrade. They're both 2-2 two -two at this point, so... He has to start a plus one armor and plus three armor. Oh, there it is. DT Shrine on the way. His uh, War Prism is still alive. But it's gonna get taken out now. More Zealots inside the main. 
Yeah, you don't want to engage right here. This map is really, really good for Viking placements. There's a lot of spots where you can put them where Terran, uh, I mean, the Protoss can't really do anything. But look at that, he just, lose, he just lost, like, what? Three Vikings right there? That's where you're like, okay, it's time to engage. Nice EMPs right there. And here comes the engagement. Doesn't have enough Vikings. Not enough Vikings against five Colossus. So now the Colossus reigns supreme. It's really nothing uh, Terrans can do, even though they have the upgrade advantage. Nothing they can pretty much do against this. And there's a GG from uh, Dragon Boy. Nice job by State. Showcasing his build a little bit more. But, uh, you know, those games were really weird builds from uh, Dragon Boy. So let's see how State does against... Just regular solid play from the Muslim. We're gonna times eight through this because I am definitely, definitely running out of energy here. But once again, please follow him on Twitter at state se2, and definitely check out that article that we'll link in the uh, description below. So you can get into, you can read up on what he thinks about his build and whatnot and why he likes it and how he responds to what. So obviously I don't know all of his responses, right? I, I don't do this build. I do the 9 scat build, but I've actually been practicing with this build and you'll probably start seeing me whenever I'm able to stream. I'm going to start using this build. They're doing some benchmark testing against the computers, and I like what I see. I like the timings from them. Of course, I might actually change it up a little bit for me. Three Gate Robo is pretty much doing the standard. The Muslim doing the standard as well. The Reaper opening. Now, see, the Muslim didn't see any of the tech. Right, he sees an expansion, he's double gas, but he doesn't know the tech. And it could be Stargate, it could be the Oracle, so he has to get these uh these missile turrets. Just to be safe. And because he got a very quick early eBay, why not just get early upgrades? He already has plus one attack, now he's getting plus one armor. This is crazy. This is madness from the Muslim. His army's way out of position. What are you doing? Let me close this timing. Alright, so here comes the timing. Nice. Oh, sick. That was sick. That was absolutely sick. Now he could get a third. Uh, the photon overcharge, the time warp, and then the force field behind the time warp. Oh my gosh. You can play aggressive on this map. Should be able to take a third behind this. There's really nothing uh, the Muslim can do at this point. He's going to have to play pretty defensive. Wow. Double Forge on the way. A little bit later than I like it, honestly. But uh, he does have Blink. And I don't know if the Muslims can be able to hold this. That is just a scary army from State. Oh my gosh. Does he see it? He does see the third, doesn't he? Yeah, he sees it. Definitely gonna force a cancel on that. There's no way uh, the Muslim's gonna hold this with the amount of units he has. He's gonna lift it up. But will it actually be safe? I don't think it's gonna be safe. And he does take it out. Now the, the thing that's going for the Muslim is he does have his upgrade advantage. He's getting his plus two attack. Does have that second base, so he's, he's gonna be able to start plus two armor whenever he could afford it. 
the third going down for state way ahead of time of uh, the Muslim the Muslim also lost a command center so that's 400 resources Corner boosting out his plus one plus one Now, like I said, if they're floating a factory, it means they're not going to be going hellbats. Muslim showing that I am right. Still has to start his plus one. There we go. Plus one armor on the way. I'm going to times two this real quick because there's really nothing going on. It's very passive play from both of the players. 118 to 124. So the Muslim's not in the worst shape whatsoever. In fact, he's actually catching up his supply right now because tech switch from state. He's tech switching into High Templars. He's trying to get stormed. So if anything, this is the best timing that the Muslim could kind of hit against state. But there's a lot of stalkers. It's going to be really hard for these Vikings to actually gain uh, a good position with blink stalkers. But look at this. Nice shots onto the Viking. I mean, onto the Colossus. Kills off one. This is really, really important. Nice pick off by him. But uh should have a another one with him. Here comes an engagement. Nice storms. Is it enough? The upgrade advantage is in favor of uh the Muslim here, but crosses. Crosses reign supreme. Once again, ninety six to one fifteen. Getting plus three attack, plus two armor on the way. Two two just started for him, and this is what I was talking about. The upgrade. If you look at these, you're like, well, state should be like he shouldn't be having this much of a problem to, you know, finish up the Muslim, right? But look at the upgrades. If you normally get your upgrades on time, Terran should be ahead when you're doing this style and upgrades. And the upgrades are pretty much lending him to be you know, staying in this game. And that's the downside. And this is gonna be hard. He actually has to put his units all of all he has them in position. Feedback. Nice job on dealing with the drops. Oh my gosh. The Muslim just started mining from his third. Does he win this? I, I feel like State's gonna win this. Well, look at the upgrade advantage. This is one thing I wanted to pinpoint. The upgrade advantage is huge on his favor. There were some slight blunders from uh, from the Muslim. Definitely losing this command center pretty much put him in this position. Uh, and because he lost all those units right here, was because that's why he lost his third command center. Kind of like trickles down, you know, effects after effects. One thing happens, another happens, and so on, so on. And the further you get behind. Now, plus three attack is going to finish up, and state, it's only on 2-2. Two, two. Does he have enough Vikings? He only has a three Vikings, and that's not enough. Right now, you want to have about nine Vikings, at least. And he's not going to be able to deal with this. So nice storms on to state. So I definitely did not show what I wanted to show. Except state dominating in, the, in an amazing fashion. And there's the GG from the Muslim. So state showcasing, you know, against these very early timings. You are fine. With Blink Stalkers, you can... Oh, okay, with Blink Stalkers, you can kind of defend all these uh, timings, early timings from uh, from Terran. The downside, I just wanted to pinpoint or show you, 
is the upgrade. Which is what I'm really worried about. If Terran decides not to be that aggressive early game. Just sits back, waits for 2 2, then pushes with Vikings, you know, Marine Marauder, Medevac. Didn't lose any of his units because he didn't pressure you. That's where it gets a little bit troubling for you if you do this build, in my opinion. But uh, other than that, right now the meta is for Terrence to play super aggressive early game because of the Widowmine edition, the uh, Medevac speed boost edition, the Hellbat edition. Kind of lends Terrence to put on some early harassment against Protoss in general. And so this build excels in that uh in that field so anyways guys thanks for watching and if you do like it please thumbs it up and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel also check out state on and follow him on twitter at state sc2 you can also watch his stream on twitch at twitch.tv slash state sc2 so anyways guys thanks for watching and i'll see you later